This is the first of the three video series on the important concept of uh, processes and how are they actually managed. In this lecture, we will discuss control flow and exceptional control flow and see some special things about control flow that would be useful to the abstraction of uh, processes and virtual memories. Before we jump to understand the important concept of uh, processes uh, that gives a process, namely a program, an illusion that the process is in full control of the uh, processor. We need to understand uh, some basics of control flow, exception control flow, synchronous and asynchronous uh, exceptions. So far, uh, we have seen how the computer executes your uh, programs and how the control flow actually changes within the program. However, the CPU executes more than one uh, program at a time. And each one of those programs requires some resources that are not directly accessible. Therefore, there must be a mechanism through which programs communicate with, with other programs in different regions of the memory. This abstraction is provided by the operating system layer that not only is responsible to load these programs, but also provide them all the required resources when requested. We need to understand how control flow works across many components of the operating system. For example, the program accesses the disk drive through the device driver module that is part of the kernel, which is yet another abstraction within the operating system that communicates with IO devices and returns to the operating system with the required blocks of data. Similarly, the program needs to communicate with main memory through the use of system calls such as malloc and calloc, etc. Okay, so the exception control flow is the basic mechanism through which the operating system handles these requests from user programs or what we will later call as uh, processes. The exception control flow is the basic mechanism used for the following. Uh, transferring control between processes and operating system, handling I.O. and virtual memory within the operating system, implementing multi-process applications like shells and web servers, implementing concurrency among uh, processes. Uh, and as we know, the processors basically do only one thing that executes one instruction on given time from start to end. It fetches the instruction from the code section of the memory, the codes, the opcode in the instruction and executes the instruction. And then the write back or memory operations are performed. This is what is called the CPU's control flow or flow of control, okay? Uh, up till now, we saw uh, two ways in computer organization and architecture courses, we saw we saw jumps, both conditional and unconditional, to implement while loops and for loops, right? We also learned about calls and returns, which are used to implement uh, procedures, okay? But both of these control flow instructions react to changes in the program state. That is nothing but information in program status world and contents of the memory, but the processors also needs to react to changes in the system state, not just the program state. For example, what if the user clicks on control C of the keyboard, or the user clicks on a different applications window on the screen? Somehow, somehow the program needs to be interrupted. What if data arrives from disk? or a network adapter. The program has to go and read data. Also, these there are uh, uh, things like when you divide by zero, which is undefined, okay? The system timer expires. That generates an interrupt. So somehow, the program has to do something in the control flow to deal with these situations. These are the things that are external to the program. The, Part of system flow and the way how programs has to react to and the way the program reacts to it is by changing the flow of uh, the program. Or in other words, the system needs to react to these exceptions, right? And we cannot achieve this by using jumps and procedure calls. And we cannot achieve this by using jumps 
and procedure policy, right? The exceptional control flow exists at all levels of a computer system. At the lowest level, such as changing processors control flow in response to system events, such as changes in system state or user generated interrupts. And the implementation is done through a combination of hardware and, op and operating system software. At the highest level, it is process context switching. And through the use of signals, and the implementation of these higher level mechanisms are through the operating system and C language runtime libraries. So what is an exception? An exception is basically a transfer of control to the operating system in response to some event. That is in response to changes in the processor state. So we have this user process. And what is a process? Uh, it is a program being executed in the RAM. So when an executable that is created by your compiler is launched and is loaded into the RAM, these programs are referred to as a process. So simply a process is execution of code. And then this is the current instruction where a certain event happens that leads to an exception. For example, a divide by zero, or uh, it can be a page fault, an IO request completes, you press control C on your keyboard, okay? So the exception processing is done by an exception handler. So the program is interrupted and an exception is generated and the control is transferred to the operating system. So exception, exception processing is done by the operating system by an exception handler that handles what should be done when a certain event happens, okay? And the control goes back to the user with three possi possibilities. It returns to the current instruction or it might return to the next instruction or it might abort, all depending on the event that has occurred. So how does the system know where to jump in the operating system? Well, this is implemented using jump tables for switch statements. Simple as that, right? These are also known as uh, interrupt vectors. So the table has an entry for each type of event that has a unique exception number K. So, as, so essentially, K is the index into the exception, exception table. The handler K is called each time exception K occurs. So long story short, the interrupt vector is just a table that is, is, that is indexed by the exception number and the contents of this table is a pointer to the first uh, instruction of the block code that deals with that exception. So it is an interrupt jump table. Now let us see, now let us see what kind of exceptions do we have. There are two types of interrupts. The first is the asynchronous, the first is the asynchronous uh, exceptions, also known as interrupts. Why are they called asynchronous? because they are caused by events external to the processor. This is indicated by setting the processor's interrupt pins. And whenever there is some signal on these pins, an exception is raised and the processor jumps and the processor jumps to the piece of code responsible to deal with that exception, okay? In this case, the handler returns to the next instruction. For example, it could be control C, clicking a mouse button, arrival of packets from a network. So the operating system must deal with all these situations for knitting all the system together, right? Uh, and then we have the hard reset and soft reset interrupts such as hitting a physical reset button on the panel and hitting control L del respectively. Uh, now, the other type of exceptions are called synchronous exceptions caused by events that are uh, triggered by executing an instruction or there is something that is undefined. 
there are three main types of uh, synchronous exceptions. Uh, we have the traps, which is a way for an application to internally transfer control to the operating system to perform some function for the applications. That is effectively the operating system APIs. Uh, for example, system calls, uh, a break a point traps, special instructions, okay? These kinds of exceptions return control to the next instruction. Then we have the faults. So the faults are unintentional, but possibly recoverable. Examples include uh, segmentation uh, protection faults, which are unrecoverable. And uh, integer divided by zero exception are unrecoverable. The page fault, however, could be recovered. This exception can either re-execute faulting or the present instruction, or it aborts. Then we have the aborts that are unintentional and unrecoverable. For example, we have a machine check in which hardware failures are detected, the system will simply, simply abort the, the, the program. Okay. So uh, now let's see an example of a trap. Uh, here we have an opening of a file that certainly requires an operating system service. And that is going to be done through a, a trap. Eventually, it is going to call the open function that take as its argument a file name and certain options. If you look at the assembly code for this instruction here, int 0x80. So this is, uh, this is a trap that diverts the except the, uh, the uh, that diverts that diverts that diverts the execution of the program. Okay. So you have this user process executing here and it reaches the int instruction. Control flow goes to the operating system and the system knows where to go. That the user needs to open a file. The operating system must find or create a file and get it ready for reading or writing. And then it returns and then it returns an integer file descriptor to the user process, okay? Here is another example of the fault synchronous exception, an exception that happens due to something that an instruction does. So here we have a code and we want to write into a, and we want to write into a location, but the, but the portion of that memory is not in RAM. This page is on the disk. So the operating system needs to provide the service and go to the disk, find that page and load it into the RAM. Uh, here is the instruction. If it so happens that the page is not in memory, it leads, it leads to what we call a page fault exception. And that gives control to the operating system. The page handler uh, must load a page, uh, load, load the page into the physical memory and returns to the faulting instruction. Move L is executed again, and it will be successful on second try if the operating system could map the page. Okay. Let's look and let's look into yet another example of uh, fault exception. In this last example, we want access into a bad memory location. Like, just say you have a pointer problem in your code. So that could be an invalid memory reference. Okay, so in that case, if you, if you touch a piece of memory that is not mapped, but the operating system cannot find a valid mapping, so it aborts your code. This is our favorite move instruction here, and the program executes until it reaches this move instruction, and it leads to a, it leads to a page fault because that is not mapped. 
the operating system determines not only that the page is not mapped, but also that it is an invalid address. So what needs to what it needs to do is that it signals the process that unfortunately I will have to abort you. So it sends this six seg six seg v signal to the user process, and the user process exits with segmentation fault. These are uh, some of the exception numbers shown on this slide. For more, please go to Intel's web, uh, website download section. To summarize, we talked about exceptions that are events that require non-standard control flow, meaning control flow other than performed using uh, jumps, using jumps and calls. Generally, it is generated externally through interrupts or internally traps and faults. After an execution, uh, after an exception is handled, one of three things may happen. Re-execute the current in instruction, resume execution with the next uh, instruction, abort the process that caused the exception. Uh, we have talked about uh, the key concept that would be useful to the abstraction of uh, processes. And in the next video, we discuss what is a process and how are they managed.